Because rather than pushing you down, what he's doing is actually elevating you. Because as he's trying to push you down, what he's doing is he's pushing you into God. And as you get pushed into God, God has a way of coming underneath you and lifting you up above the heads of your adversary. And giving you new authority and new power to destroy the works of the enemy. I know the devil regrets the day he ever tried to destroy my family with sickness. I know he regrets it. When I was 12 years old, sickness hit my family. My mom became bedridden, diagnosed with blood disorders, uh, MS, tumors, and she was on 24, by the end of it, 24 bottles of medicine a day, couldn't even get out of bed, just bedridden, and the enemy was trying to destroy her with sickness and our family. And when I was 14, after two years of this, when I was 14, my grandmother, who's a good Catholic grandmother, was at the Catholic church we grew up in, because I grew up Catholic, and saw a healing mass being advertised in the church. So she came home to my mom and said, oh, the church is, is having a mass where they're praying for sick people. You should go. And my mom said, I'm going to go. And that day that she got up to go to that healing mass for healing, when she woke up that morning, every pain in her body magnified, worse than it had ever been. And I have learned, I have learned that before the greatest breakthrough is usually the greatest opposition. So if you have faced any opposition in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in your own personal life, if you have faced any opposition, get really happy. Because it just means your greatest breakthrough is right in front of you. Come on now, be glad, be glad. The greatest breakthrough is right ahead of you. And my mom, this was a threshing floor in my family. This was a, a time of great pain and trauma that my family was going through. It was not a positive situation. If I could rewind it, I'd probably choose not to have that happen in our family. I would choose, if I had my choice, I would choose for that not to have happened. But as I look back now, when my mom went to that healing service, she collapsed on the floor in the back of the sanctuary. And by the time she got up to the altar, the priest couldn't even get his hand on her to pray for her. Before the priest even prayed for her, God put his hand on her. And this was a mass. This was a quiet mass. It wasn't a Pentecostal meeting. There was no worship team. There was no singing. It was a quiet mass where they were quietly praying for the sick. And it was very quiet until my mom got up to the front. Then it was no longer quiet. And before, he put his, before the priest put his hand on her, God put his hand on her. And she went flying 10 feet through the air. Volts of electricity surging through her body. And she thought she died and went to heaven. No one ever told her about this kind of experience. No one ever told her or she never even saw it. Nothing. I mean, this was a sovereign encounter with God. And she thought, she really thought she died and went to heaven. And, and before she got off the floor, I mean, just tons of God's power surging through every cell in her body. And as she laid on that floor, she got saved, healed, and delivered all in one shot. All in one shot. So when people tell me today, oh, you know, all that Holy Spirit stuff, it's not God, it's not this, not that. Well, you know what? Too late. I already discovered that it is. And you are okay to have your opinion, and that is good, but I already know. And I thank God for his power. I thank God. For when he electrocutes people with raw Holy Spirit power, I thank God for that. Because God is able to do in that moment of encounter more than we could accomplish in 20 years. More than we could do in our own human effort or in our own human power. You could try to counsel yourself out of addiction. You could try to change yourself. But I have learned that there are some things that you cannot do. There are some limits doctors have. Praise God for doctors, but they got limits. They got limits. I feel like casting out this pharmaceutical demon. It's like, I look at these commercials and it's like, oh, you know, the smiling person. Oh, take this medicine. And, oh, you know, and you, you may have suicidal tendencies and then you may, you know, die of a stroke or you may have cancer, but you'll be healed of your, you know, you'll be able to sleep good at night. And, you know, you have like someone smiling as they like list all of these horrific side effects of a medication. And then they give you one medicine. Then you got to take a medicine for that medicine. You got to take a medicine for that medicine. And before you know it, you're on 24 bottles of medicine. It sounds funny, but it's like, I think that's a demon. 
just to bind people up and all of this stuff. And my mom was bound up like that, 24 bottles of medicine, until God encountered her. And you know, we didn't really know the Bible. We didn't, we didn't read the Bible. We thought, you know, God's love, everything is okay. If you're a good person, you go to heaven. You know, if you're a Buddhist, if you're Hindu, whatever, it's all the roads lead to God. It's all okay. That's what we thought. That's what we believed. Until this moment of encounter with the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, Jesus very clearly revealed to my mom and my family, Jesus is the only way to God. He is the Savior, Healer, and Deliverer. And in one shot, my mom was completely transformed. And she came home that night, walked through the front door, shining like a light bulb. And I looked at her, and I'm like, who are you? What has happened to you? What has happened to you? And she said, Jesus healed me tonight. Jesus Christ healed me tonight. He's alive. He's real. He healed me tonight. And she took all of her rack of medicine and dumped it right in the garbage and never took them again. The healthiest person I know from that night until today. 20-something years, totally healthy. Praise God. Totally healthy. And that week, my whole family got saved. And you know, there's a scripture in the Bible that says the goodness of God leads us to repentance. You know, no one even had to tell me I'm a sinner. No one had to tell me. The moment I saw the goodness of God in my family, I instantly had an awareness by the Holy Spirit of my own sin nature, and I knew I needed forgiveness. His goodness brought a revelation of my need for Him. And then I confessed my sin as a 14-year-old kid, felt the washing, cleansing blood of Jesus over my life, and was born again, was made brand new, was recreated in Christ. Hallelujah. God is able to take the threshing floor and turn it into a place of harvest. And look at this. So many years later, the very thing sent to destroy my family, now we have seen thousands of people healed and set free. And I'm sure the enemy regrets messing with my mom. Come on now, I'm sure he regrets it. Messed with the wrong one. Praise God. Then it says, the vats will overflow with new wine and oil. I love this scripture. The vats will overflow with new wine and oil. You know what this tells me about God? It tells me that he is not a God of just enough. He is a God of more than enough. Because if he was a God of just enough in our lives, the prophet Joel would have prophesied, and the vats will fill up to the top and stop. But that's not what it says. He says, the vats will fill up and they will overflow with new wine and oil. And we know symbolically from Old Testament prophecy to New Testament fulfillment, new wine and oil is the person of the Holy Spirit. And he prophesies, the vats are going to overflow. They're going to overflow with new wine and oil. And I really believe we're in a day right now where God doesn't want to give you just enough oil. He wants to give you more than enough. And do you remember the wise and the foolish virgins? Five wise, five foolish. The foolish ones had just enough for the moment. The wise had extra oil for the future. And you see, what God is doing right now is he is drawing people into a place where they don't just have oil for the moment, but they will have oil for the long haul. They will have oil for the journey. They will have oil to finish their race. Because God doesn't want you just to start. He wants you to finish. He wants to anoint you so that you fully complete the race that he has set before you. So he is a God who will release more than enough. And I love this because it tells me, okay, God is not going to give me just enough of his Holy Spirit, just enough of his anointing for me to survive my life. For me to get the breakthrough I need. For me to be healed where I need to be healed. For me to you know, get victory where I need victory. But not only is God going to do all of that for me, but then he's going to give me extra oil, extra anointing, so that there's an overflow from my life to help other people around me. That's the overflow. And this is what happens in the moving of the Holy Spirit, that as the Holy Spirit fills your life, not only does he heal you, 
heal you of past trauma, heal you physically, renew your thinking, heal your heart, transform your life, give you victory over temptation, give you victory over sin. Not only does God do all of that through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, but then he will give you so much extra of the Holy Spirit that there's an overflow out of you that will touch everyone around you. And I believe this is where God wants to bring the church from a place of, oh God, just help me, to a point where we receive God's help for us, but then we have something to give away to somebody else. And I think of Peter and John at the gate, beautiful, when the lame man was there, and Peter looks at him, and he says, what I have I give to you, rise up and walk. And this man rises up and he walks and he's healed. See, because Peter had a revelation, what I have I give to you. What Jesus has deposited in me, I have something now that I can give away to you. The disciples never said, oh, Jesus has given this to me. Now we get to just keep this for ourselves. And we have this beautiful Holy Spirit and we have this anointing and this power in our lives. But no, they understood that God gave it to them so that they could give it away to other people. But you have to get the revelation of what you have. Because if you live your life and you're not in the Word... You're not worshiping God, you're not getting into his presence, and you wake up Monday morning and you just get stuck in the nine to five and you just get stuck in the day to day and you're like, oh God, just help me survive my life today, God. Look, you can have moments where you feel like you just need to survive your life, but that is not your life. That is not where you're supposed to stay. You can have a day like that, but don't let that become your existence. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly until it overflows. So you may have times where you feel like that, but you don't have to stay there. You have the revelation, no, Jesus died to give me abundant life. Life that will overflow from me. So while I feel like I'm on the threshing floor right now, I can look forward to the harvest. While I feel like something is difficult right now, I can look forward to the breakthrough. I can trust the goodness of God. I can trust the hand of God. And in the process, have joy. In the process, have joy. And start to overflow to other people. And I believe that we don't just overflow in church. We overflow when we leave church. And you know, whatever you're filled up with is what you overflow. Oh, praise God. Come on now. We can say amen or ouch to that one. Whatever you fill yourself up with is what will eventually overflow from your life. If you are filling yourself up with truth, with God's word, with his presence, that is what will overflow from you. But if you're filling yourself up with all sorts of other stuff, eventually that is what's going to overflow from you. If you get worried and anxious and you just let that fill you up on the inside, eventually that spirit of anxiety and fear and all that, it's just going to start to overflow from you. It's going to become an atmosphere around you. But God doesn't want us living in that atmosphere. He wants us living in the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit and of His presence and of His goodness and of His love and of His power. Not just in church, but everywhere we go. And I've learned that this thing is for everywhere we go. This thing is for all of us for everywhere we go. Because that's how we're going to transform the world. You see, you let God transform you. You let God give you a breakthrough. And then your breakthrough becomes a prophetic invitation for someone else to step into their break. Your walk. Praise how do I Lord. know that? Because the book of Revelation you, teaches Jesus. us that the testimony of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I thank you tonight for your presence. I thank you that you are the God of the overflow. You are the God of more than enough in our lives. And Father, I thank you tonight that you are not only breaking us through, but you are anointing us to be a walking breakthrough. And I believe in this place tonight, maybe there's some people you felt like you've been through a threshing floor, or maybe you feel like you're in a threshing floor, and you need God's strength and power. Uh, if that's you, just quickly stand up to your feet. We're going to pray for some different things here. But if you feel like, God, I've been, that is me. I've been in that place. God is here for you right now. And God is transforming that place of threshing into a place of harvest and breakthrough in your life. And Father, right now, first we pray. Right now, we just say, Holy Spirit, I ask for divine grace to be upon each one. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would experience breakthrough. Through every obstacle that the enemy has tried to put in front of them, God, I pray for breakthrough through those obstacles. 
that those obstacles will not be able to stand in front of them, but they will have to give way to the anointing of God. Holy Spirit, I ask for your presence. I ask for your presence to settle in this room. He's here. He's here right now. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would put your hand upon each person. Father, I thank you that tonight is a night of breakthrough. Oh, Jesus, I thank you that you are lifting people tonight into a new place of authority, power, and overflow. Overflow. If you're hungry for the overflow, I want you to stand to your feet. You say, God, I want to I wanna step into that overflow that place of abundance, that abundance of your spirit, that abundance of your life, that abundance of your presence in my life. Oh, Jesus, let your glory come in a fresh way in my life. Father, anoint my head with oil that my cup runs over. And I pray for a fresh anointing upon your people tonight. Father, that their cup would run over. That they would have more than enough oil for other people. That they would be a catalyst of change. Oh, in the name of Jesus. 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 Lord, let your glory come. Let your glory fill this place like a rushing mighty wind. Breathe upon each one tonight. Let the wind of heaven blow through this place, breathing new life ha, over your people, breathing new life into your people, breathing victory and joy and breakthrough into your people. name of Jesus, in the mighty name, the name that's above every name, oh, at the name of Jesus, oh, there's a glory, there's a glory, there's a glory coming into the room right now, there's a glory starting to move all around this room right now. There's a breakthrough for you tonight. There's an open door tonight. In the name of Jesus, I say receive that touch of the glory tonight. Receive that touch of His anointing tonight. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Let the well of God, just let the well of God start to rise up within you tonight. There's a breakthrough within your own belly tonight. There's a breakthrough within your own spirit tonight. Oh, Jesus. Ah. 
There's a breakthrough anointing. There's a breakthrough anointing. Whoa, there's a breakthrough anointing. I'll tell you, there's a breakthrough anointing. The anointing's increasing in the room right now. If you need a breakthrough, if you want the overflow of God, come down to the altar right now because there's a river flowing. There's an anointing that's increasing right now. You're going to step right into your breakthrough tonight. You're going to step right into His glory tonight. You don't even have to wait for someone to pray for you. You just come to this altar and you just let that anointing start to wash over you tonight. Hey, 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 hey. Jesus. Let your rain come down. Let your glory.